Okay, Stacy. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the County of Ventura Oxnard Airport Runway Taxiway Pavement Reconstruction Project Public Meeting. We are gonna just give folks a few minutes here to uh, get logged in and get situated and we will be starting uh, shortly. So just hang tight. Thank you to all of you uh, who have joined us so far. Uh, we're just giving folks a few minutes to get settled in and signed in. Uh, welcome to the County of Ventura Oxnard Airport Runway Taxiway Pavement Reconstruction Project Public Meeting. So again, we're just gonna wait a few more minutes. Um, and while you wait, uh, there is a sign in option in the chat feature. So if you can just go ahead and click on your chat button There'll be a link there and you can sign in. We'll just wait a few more minutes. Okay, I think we're all set and ready to get started. So thank you to all. <laughs> thank you to all who have uh, joined us today. Again, this is the County of Ventura Oxnard Airport Runway Taxiway Pavement Reconstruction Project Public Meeting. Uh, my name is Stacy Falcioni from the Outreach Team and I'll be going through some logistics before we get started today. This meeting is being recorded, so please be aware. Please uh, go ahead and sign in through the Google sign-in sheet link posted in the chat feature. There will be an interactive two-question survey we would like you all to take in the middle of the presentation, so stay tuned on that. We will also host a Q&A session at the end of this presentation, so please hold all of your questions um, until we get to that session. Next, I'll briefly explain how we will run today's meeting and how you can further participate. We, we will be turning off the cameras during the presentation so that you can focus on the slides. We will turn the cameras back on during the Q&A period so that you can see the panelists. We will be taking questions after the presentation in three ways. The raise your hand feature. Open the attendees tab and click on the raise your hand feature button. We will call on you and unmute your microphone so that you can verbally ask your question. The chat feature. You can enter your question here and we will read your question out loud. Those that are only able to call in can also, can also ask, a, ask a question by pressing star nine. We will call on you and unmute your lines so that you can ask your question verbally. If at any time you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please type your concern in, into the chat feature and one of our team members will assist you. Please only ask one question at a time to allow for everyone to be heard. 
And lastly, we also remind everyone to please be courteous and respectful. I'll now pass it off to Kip Turner, Director of Airports, who will introduce the project. Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. I see we've already got some good numbers popping up. So we really appreciate the participation. We need this participation on this workshop and we really thank you for that. Uh, this is the first workshop of, I think is what's going to be three uh, just for this project to discuss this project. We have an outstanding team working on this. Uh, a lot of experts that have some good experience with these type of projects that are gonna be talking to you today and, and getting your feedback and your input and hopefully trying to make sure we uh, address any of your concerns or fears that you may have in relation to this project. There is a lot of work that is going into this project behind the scenes to make it as less impactful as possible um, and to also make sure we come out of this project with the infrastructure that we need to continue going for another 30, 40, 50 years. So with that, I'll, I'll sort of be quiet and turn it over to the team that we have, but thank you all for being here and please participate, don't be shy. And uh, I don't think our crew will be, but look forward to all the, uh, all the feedback and thank you again for being here. Chuck, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Kip. Um, my name, good afternoon everyone, is uh, Chuck McCormick. I'm really excited to be here. I'm with uh, Mead and Hunt, the Mead and Hunt team here, the designer of record for this project at Oxnard. We'll go into a little bit of what this project is. For an introduction, I'm the project manager for this project on the design uh, of the project. Uh, some of my background, I've been in the uh, aviation industry for over 33 years now. I'm a current and active pilot for over 34 years, so I'm extremely excited about an airport development project and one uh, that really benefits the aviation community. So we're really excited to see this project. Um, along with our team is, uh, we have Jeff Leonard. He's a senior civil engineer. Uh, Jeff is gonna take you through some of the different options as far as types of reconstruction of the uh, project. And then uh, next we have uh, Jeanette Larrera. She's the uh, senior civil design lead for this project. She is leading the civil design of the uh, rehabilitation of the runways and the taxiway at Oxnard Airport for this project. And lastly, we have uh, Alex Rodonovich. Um, senior uh, civil engineer. Alex has gone through and really vetted out the uh, various alternates that we're going to show you today and the various phasing options that we're going to go through. So next slide please. So, so uh, like Kip mentioned this is the first of three public workshops so please realize that, that this will not be the only opportunity to comment on this project. We're in the preliminary design of this project so that is really the purpose of this project to get your input from the airport tenant side of the airport for this project. The, uh, we're going to go over the project overview and description. We're going to go over what some of the options are for the types of construction. We're going to discuss the phasing of the projects and the different alternate alternates that we have looked at and considered uh, that are options for this construction project. Um, as Stacy mentioned, we're going to have a survey uh, that you can uh, participate in uh, before the Q&A session of this. And then next we will go into the questions and answer section of the uh, presentation. And then lastly, we'll uh, you'll see a slide to show the future meetings and also the contact information, how you can provide additional information or, or ask questions of this project. And we'll be able to get responses back to you if you're not able to get that information here. So let's move on to the next slide. So the project overview. So here we have a, um, an exhibit of showing Oxnard Airport. Uh, I'll first start off, uh, Oxnard Airport is a public use airport. It's owned and operated by the County of Ventura. It's located in the County of Ventura, obviously, and it's in Oxnard, California. Let's go back one, there we go. The airport has a, it's a single runway airport, which is runway 725. It has five taxiway connectors, and then it has one full length parallel taxiway. So this project, um, which will include the removal of the existing pavement surface and excavation of subgrade. It's gonna have construction of new pavement sections and crush aggregate base coarse shoulders. It's gonna have the uh, new pavement markings uh, after the pavement's put down. It's gonna have installation of under drain system and adjustments to the storm drain. So basically with that, it, it's gonna have storm drain improvements for the airport. A um, big benefit as well, it's going to have ins the installation of new uh, runway edge lights 
and also we'll have a, adjustments or modifications to the MALSEF uh, lights. And if anybody didn't know, MALSEF is the approach light system. So that's a medium intensity approach lighting system with sequence flashers. If you didn't know what MALSEF was. And then uh, along with the project finally is the installation of new airfield guidance and mandatory signs that the FAA requires. Let's go to the next one. So the project description, um, there's for the project itself, um, there's, let me first go back to the, the alternates to fund this project. So the project is gonna be funded with a combination of funds from the County of Ventura and a grant from the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. So that's what's called an AIP grant, an Airport Improvement Program grant. That, those grants, uh, it, it's a significant amount of timing and, and uh, coordination with the FAA along with the county to apply for these grants and have them offered by the FAA. So the, the planning work has been complete. We're in the initial uh, preliminary design of this project. And the project again is broken down is as follows. Um, what's called a base bid is, that's the runway 725 reconstruction. And then we have two, uh, what are called bid alternates. We have one and two. The first one is, would be the reconstruction of the taxiway connectors. So that's uh, taxiways alpha through echo. And then we have the bid alternate two, which is the parallel taxiway Foxtrot reconstruction. So a little background on the a AIP funding side. So once the project, uh, again, we're in the preliminary design stage. Once the uh, project is, the design is complete, um, that'll be shortly after the first of the year in the January, February timeframe. Then the project will go out to advertise for bids uh, from contractors. That's typically about a 30 day period. Once the bids are open and a low response of bidder is determined, then a final grant application is submitted to the FAA requesting the uh, grant be based on the lowest response of bidder's uh, cost. And then the FAA will then issue the grant and then the project can start for construction. So next, uh, the next slide, we're gonna uh, turn it over to Jeff Leonard and uh, for these next few slides. Jeff? Thank you, Chuck. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Leonard. I've had the pleasure of working uh, with the County of Ventura for uh, over 12 years on the various projects, um, including several at Oxnard Airport. And with, uh, with time, time does change everything. We have uh, three different photos here going back to 1994 of what Oxnard Airport used to look like. And the day after pavement is constructed, it does start to wear and deteriorate due to several different types of factors, including but not limited to the climate, the materials, uh, the number and size of aircraft operations, the drainage, as well as construction quality. The current runway uh, system has served the Ventura County Department of Airports very well for the last 28 years. The last major reconstruction project for Oxnard was in 1992 where it was a new pavement surface course, followed by uh, multiple seal coats in 2003 and 2012 to help prolong the life of the airport uh, or of the runway, as well as, uh, as required by the FAA to make it eligible for um, major improvements following. As part of our engineering analysis, we continue to do uh, what's called an airfield pavement management system. It's basically like a 30 point check for what you would do for your car in order to analyze how the pavement is wearing over time. We typically do these every three to five years. And we, the most recent ones were in 2012 and 2016 with pavement analysis resulting in the runway being in fair condition. And the ultimate goal of monitoring the pavement uh, as time passes on is to keep the runway in a safe operational condition and to be uh, proactive in programming a uh, major improvement project so that the funding is aligned with the, uh, with the condition of the runway to ensure that we can keep the, uh, the safe condition. Next slide, please. So as we started evaluating uh, years ago, the different uh, levels or options of improvement that are, are necessary, uh, it was determined that you know time has come, the pavement served its life, and it's time for a major improvement project. When evaluating the different options, uh, we looked at a rehabilitation type method or a reconstruction method. A rehabilitation method is, is the most cost effective when the underlying base and the subgrade is of adequate strength capacity and the surface can be removed or 
replaced or improved, which similar uh, engineering terms might be a mill and fill or an asphalt concrete overlay. The other available option is a reconstruction. And that's required when the underlying base and the subgrade is no longer sufficient to support operations or the amount of base necessarily necessary to build up in a rehab situation is not cost effective. So we evaluated seven different pavement design alternatives that fall under the rehabilitation and the reconstruction options. Next slide, please. So the, the analysis led us to the rehabilitation option was actually more expensive due to the condition and the low strength of the underlying subgrade. And so it, it, was, it would have required a, long, a larger base section to be constructed, which turns into longer construction durations. And ultimately there was FAA compliance standards that we were challenged to meet due to the grade differential with the increase in base. The pavement reconstruction option, however, was able to correct the major subgrade strength corrections. Uh, the FAA analyzes the subgrade strength, what's called a California bearing ratio, and the value at Oxnard for the uh, in-place condition was one, which is the lowest possible. And so uh, affording the opportunity to go in and strengthen the subgrade, we're able to build a sound platform to build the remaining aggregate base and asphalt concrete pavement section. In addition to the reconstruction option, we are able to make changes to the geometry as well as the surface, uh, surface gradient of the runway to allow for FAA compliance as well as the reconstruction option provided a 20 year design life. In addition to the reconstruction option actually proved to be um, uh, have a lower cost as well as uh, less construction duration for the improvements. So when you consider the cost, the timing of construction and quality, as well as the longevity of the improvements, the re reconstruction option prevailed. And the, we worked very closely with the FAA to review the multiple design alternatives and the FAA ultimately concurred with the reconstruction approach as well. Next, Jeanette will talk about some of the phasing options and alternatives that we looked at. Next slide, please. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, so we look at different phasing alternatives for the construction. And for the most part, we took into consideration the safety, the runway availability, the project duration, and the cost. And we'll be presenting to you these five alternatives that we analyze. And these include alternative one, full runway closure with no arrivals or departures. Alternative two, a two-phase construction with limited runway availability. Alternative three, it's a three-phase construction with also limited runway availability and then also a full runway closure. Alternative four is closing the runway 725 and converting it to and converting taxiway Foxtrot to a temporary runway. And alternative five is closing the runway and then doing only night work. Next slide. And some of these alternatives that we'll be presenting to you, um, some of them are not feasible. Would we look at all the alternatives and then to see if they were even feasible with, because of safety, constructability. And you saw that you guys know, so construction is expected to occur in the summer of, or fall of next year, 2021, but this is subject to FAA funding. So for the first alternative, uh, so for this alternative, we'll be closing uh, what well, we analyze, what would happen if we close the runway for the whole construction duration. So th this means that there will be no arrivals or departures. Next slide. So the runway, as I mentioned, it will be closed as well as all the taxiways will be closed and there will be no air fuel facilities available. The, lightings, the lights will be off, the puppies, the reels. And what this really helps is because this allows for graded concurrent construction operations. So, and then also the quality of the work will be better. At the end, we'll have a better product, a better runway and taxiways that will have a better rideability. And the construction duration for 
this phase, it will be approximately three to four month, months for the main work element. That's pretty much the payment, the light, um, the initial markings, and then we'll need like about an additional two weeks of night closures for grooving and the final markings. Now, Alex will be talking to you about the uh, additional alternatives that we analyze. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. So um, the next thing we wanted to look at is, is it possible to have, instead of closing the entire runway for the project, is it possible to do partial runway closures and still be able to operate at a reduced length? And if so, how many phases would you need in order to accomplish that? Um, so if you go to the next slide, you'll see the first example of what this might look like. So this is, in essence, a two major phase situation where you're constructing one half of, of the runway and then constructing the other half of the runway. Um, so in order to determine the length of runway that would work with this alternative, uh, we started with runway 25 displaced threshold uh, which is the same as it, as it currently is, and cited runway seven based on the ability to have access to the taxiway Charlie. And this results in a runway length of approximately 2,500 feet. Um, with a 2,500 foot runway, you're looking at not necessarily jet aircraft, but likely um, most, you know, multi-engine turbo props, um, that type of uh, aircraft will be accommodated by this. Um, and then as far as the construction zone, you'll see there's a little bit of a, of a clearance there. So there's a 400 foot safety clearance between runway seven and the construction zone to allow for safety between uh, the construction equipment and the aircraft on approach. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, um, you'll see Basically, this is you're, you're picking up where you left off with the last phase on the construction limit and adding the same, you know, 400 foot clearance, uh, which this then results in a in a um, a length of about 2,100 feet. Um, so you got 2,500 for the first, 2,500 or 21 for the for the next. Um, you know, there are there are potentially different ways that you could you could split up the the runway lengths, um, just depending on whether you want to have back taxi conditions. Um, but, you know, essentially you're looking at somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 feet of runway um, in order to, to, um, to get a two-phase scenario. Um, and then it also, also should be mentioned that these, you know, these reduced length runway alternatives are assuming uh, BFR conditions uh, and no runway lengths uh, for, for operating conditions. Um, so whereas, you know, Jeanette described a full runway closure, which would, is anticipated to take about three, three to four months, um, the more phases you add, uh, the more time it's going to add to the project. Um, so we estimated, rough, rough estimate that we're probably looking at five to five and a half uh, months of construction. Um, plus the, the same two weeks of night closure uh, for the final grooving and markings. Um, now, if you go to the next slide, uh, I'll talk about alternative three. So what if we want to look at a runway length that's larger, longer than 2,500 feet? Uh, for instance, what would a 4,000 foot runway look like uh, in terms of phasing? Um, so the next slide will show um, what that would look like. Uh, so you can immediately see uh, a significant reduction of construction area uh, if if trying to maintain a 4,000 foot runway. And while a 4,000 foot runway will accommodate larger jets, um, we're not likely to see anything much larger than uh, you know, 79 foot wingspans. Um, so you're not getting large, large jets, but you are getting some, definitely more than what you would get on a 2,500. Um, but what, what the, the implications of, of this phase are, are seen on the next slide. So if you go to the next slide, this is the central portion of the runway. So with the ability to only construct a small 
fraction of the runway when the uh, runway is operational. That means that uh, a, a majority of the project will have to be built when the runway is closed. So about 75% of the runway and, and taxiways uh, not going to be too much less of a duration than what than the full closure for the entire project. So you know it's just it's it's a question of what do you gain um, by by having those you know 4,000 foot runways available for a time. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, um, it's basically just a, a mirror image of of the west. Only this time, this also includes the uh, the malls F uh, threshold bar construction. So whereas alternative two is likely to be somewhere between you know five to five and a half months of construction, uh, alternative three you're going to add another significant phase, probably going to be closer to six six and a half months to do this one. Um, next slide, please. So another thing we wanted to explore is the possibility of converting the parallel taxiway foxtrot to a temporary runway. Um, so the next slide will show you what, what that might look like. So we did we did spend some time, you know, evaluating this this option, you know, looking at different different runway widths, uh, for instance, you know, 60 feet, 75 feet. Um, but even with a 60 foot width runway, um, which is shown shown here in this exhibit, um, there are some definite concerns with the proximity of that runway to you know to the nearby hangars um, and the landslide areas. Um, so although it's conceptually possible, we didn't consider this option to be feasible. Um, just due to the you know adjacent to hangars and landside features and also there are safety zone compliance issues. Um, so our conclusion for this is that it was not a feasible alternative. Um, and then on the next slide, I'll turn it back over to Jeanette uh, to briefly talk about alternative five. Thank you, Alex. So the last alternative that we looked at is alternative five. So this means that we'll be we analyzed if it was even feasible to close the runway at night and then do only night work. Um, it will be closed for like 10 hours at night and then it will open for full operations during, during the day. If we go to the next slide. So we found that this alternative was not feasible due to the nature of the work activities because the grades of the runway and the taxiways um, will change so much. So we won't be able to, if we do it at night, we would only be able to advance about 30 to 50 feet um, in length for that construction. And without the grade changes, it will be infeasible. Also the creation times for the um, line treatment of the subgrade, we'll have to let it sit for about like seven days before we can add the base and the asphalt. So that's why we um, find, we, we found out that this alternative will not be feasible. Next, time, next slide, uh, Thomas from Mariano and Associate will Mm, explain to you how you can participate in the presentation and how you can be part of the survey. Hello everybody, my name is Thomas Reese. I'm part of the outreach team. Uh, I'm going to deploy a survey question for you. Uh, you will have the ability to vote on this question. Our question during our presentation today, what is more important for you? Limited runway availability or expedited construction duration? So I'm going to launch the poll now. Uh, I'm going to leave this poll active uh, through our next section. So once we see a good level of participation, uh, I will close the poll and uh, turn it back over to our team. So we will transition now to the uh, Q&A portion of our presentation. So I'm gonna transition to my colleague, uh, Stephanie Espinosa. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, yes, my name is Stephanie and I'm also with the outreach team. And I see some of you are already asking questions in the chat, but if you would like to um, ask your question directly to the panel, you can also uh, use the raise the hand feature. And once we see someone has a hand raised, we can unmute you at that time. 
Okay, it looks like Charles McLaughlin. Oh, looks like your hand was not raised anymore. Okay, so again, feel free to use the raise the hand function. Oh, there you are, Charles. Okay, we are going to unmute you now and you may ask your question and make sure you're, uh, you unmute yourself as well. There we go. Am I on mute now? Hello? Go, go ahead. Okay. Uh, phase two, the first part of phase two, is there any way to leave the ILS open uh, so that training can be done? Um, th this is uh, Chuck McCormick. I'll, I'll start off with that project or start off with that question. So uh, the question is, is there any way to leave the ILS on during uh, phase two with the shorter runway lengths? Um, Right now, it's planned that the ILS uh, would be turned off during any any types of the runway projects. Um, right now, the FAA would have to modify that approach uh, to do that um, and to do a shorter length like that. So the glide, you wouldn't have a full ILS if you even if you could, but the FAA's intent is to have the ILS completely turned off. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, we have Tom. Uh, Tom, we are going to unmute you now and make sure you unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Will the runways get any different in size or capacity? As, as far as the, the, the runways, um, the runway 725, it'll be reconstructed back to its existing uh, width and length. Um, so it's, it's basically, yeah, we're not extending the runway, we're not widening the runway, it's going back to its existing conditions as far as size. How about weight? Weight, we're looking at an aircraft uh, fleet mix. So we're looking at the aircraft fleet mix. Um, um, to the, I don't know, uh, Jeff, if you want to take, or Jeanette, if you want to take a, a handle on that as far as yeah. the weight we're so, looking at. Right, the fleet mix we're evaluating does include uh, up to the 737 with uh, a G650 as well as uh, Embraer 175. Is okay. currently what we're evaluating. Okay. Okay, thank you, Tom, for your question. Appreciate the feedback. Um, okay, Mark Sullivan, we are going to unmute you now and please make sure you unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Um, since for many, for some of the commercial tenants and also for the private tenants, um, many are going to have to move to another airport and incur a tie down fee, et cetera, if there's a complete shutdown. Has the Department of Airports given any consideration to any kind of rent relief on county hangers? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, as far as rent relief, um, is is that something uh, Department of Airports can consider? Hey, Chuck, this is Kip. Uh, I don't think we're at that point of discussion yet. That's not what this conversation's for. We'll look at all of the questions that come in today. We've got two more workshops where we'll be following up on questions that uh, may not be answered today, but uh, today's today's workshop is more focused on the project and the uh, how to move forward with the project and we can work out the details uh, that might be involved with that uh, impacts of the project at a later point. Understood. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mark. Okay, we have some questions coming in from the chat. I'm just going to start um, from the top. We have a question from Mark Swanee who wants to know what is a responsive bidder? So, a, a res, and it's typically the lowest responsive bidder. So, the, the, the bidders, uh, when, the, when the bid tabulations come in or the bids come in, we as the engineer will evaluate those bids based on correctness um, of, do they, is their math correct? Did they complete all the forms uh, that were required as part of the bid? So, those are the types of things we're looking at as a lowest and responsive bidder. Um, Jeff, if you want to follow up on any other items that you can yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chuck. So being an AIP funded project, the county has to follow grant assurances. And so that there are several, um, you know, Davis-Bacon requirements, bonding requirements, surety requirements, things of those nature that go with most jobs. But there is a whole, uh, there are more or additional requirements for an FA funded job that are evaluated. And it's the entire package from each 
bidder that is evaluated to determine what is responsive and responsible. And obviously, license, you know, contractors license, Department of Industrial Relation requirements, things of those nature. Excellent, thank you. Um, we have a question from Brent Jacobs who wants to know what is the percent of funds coming from the FAA? So for the percent of funds from the FAA, uh, normally on a project like this, um, this is gonna be a 90% funded project from the FAA on an AIP grant. Um, so that's their normal participation rate um, on the projects. Okay, and uh, Brent had a follow-up question. What is the time period of construction and when will it be completed? So in base, the, the start of construction is dependent on the FAA uh, funding when that comes in, uh, but with, with bids opening in the February timeframe of 2021, the grant application would be, uh, the final grant application would be submitted to the FAA and looking to then uh, get the grant in May of 2021 and then with the project starting in the summer of 2021. And based on what alternate, they have different durations on which one is chosen. Jeff, or if, I don't know if you want to throw anything more in on that. Yeah, I, that's our ultimate goal right now. I mean, it is, as Chuck said, um, you know, this year obviously did throw us into some unusual times. So right now we're actually first getting some grants right now, but the, this is a, a priority project for the FA. They have reaffirmed uh, we have biweekly calls just to make sure all our ducks are in a row. So the goal right now, uh, based on FA funding, is for a June construction start time. Okay, uh, looks like we have some hands raised. Tom, we have another question from Tom. Um, we're going to go ahead and unmute you. Please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. I did not have another question. I think that's the same one. Oh, I apologize. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You may go ahead. Okay, um, then we can move to Gerard. Um, Gerard, we're gonna unmute you and you may ask your question. Yes, my question is uh, during any of the construction scenarios, uh, will it be, will the airport be limited to daytime VFR only? Um, yes, so for the construction scenarios, um, other than alternate one, which is uh, the runway is, and the uh, runway is closed, Alternates uh, two, three, and four. Yeah, it would be daytime uh, VFR use only. We're just correct, Chuck. Just alternatives two and three. Alternative four wasn't deemed feasible. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Alternates two and three is a is a actual alternate that would work. Yeah. Those are it's daytime VFR. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, we had a couple other questions from Mark uh, Swanee. Is a bidder's past performance considered in the selection process? Uh, I can answer that. Yeah, it, it is considered. Um, it, it does have, it is subjective. So unless there's previous issues within the county with a prospective bidder, um, traditionally it, uh, it does have, a. It, like I said, it is subjective. So it's rare to have a, uh, I don't believe the county of Ventura, and I can look it up further, but they don't have specific experience requirements for a similar type of work. Um, as long as they have a class A contractor's license, uh, they are considered eligible to perform and bid on the project. Okay, um, he also had another question. Is construction time a consideration for contractor selection? Is construction time. So that's, that's where it gets, uh, a little tricky with the competitive bid. So until we know what bid alternates are being awarded, and that will serve as you know ultimately the length of the construction duration. So we don't know that at the time of bidding. So the the contractor that does uh, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder would be responsible to you know whatever portion or portions of the uh, contract award between the base bid and the bid alternates they would be required to perform within those construction durations. So I'm not sure if I answered the question, but it's not going to have, we're not going to be able to pick a contractor based on the type of award, the FAA to ensure that it's a fair bidding opportunity. We have to put in the, it's called a basis of award. So it might just be the runway only. So if the contractor with the lowest uh, bid for the runway 
uh, that's what the bids will be evaluated on to make sure that it's a fair bidding environment. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a hand raised. Lynn, we're going to unmute, uh, unmute you. Go ahead and unmute yourself as well, and you may ask your question. Um, it has to deal with uh, runway uh, length. You showed us runway length. Runway length and landing distance available are two different items. Um, so from the touchdown point to the end of the run, so, so the number you've given us is actual physical concrete or asphalt in this case. Is that correct? Yes, the, the, the two phases, and Alex, if you want to chime in on that, is yes, it's the runway distance available, but to your point, landing distance available because runway 725, runway 25 is a displaced threshold, the landing distance is going to be slightly shorter than that 2,500 feet we're looking at. Okay, so <clears throat> currently, uh, there was a question that dealt with um, I expanding the runway. The, the runway length as it currently exists is about 5,700 feet plus or minus if I'm correct, but the landing distance available is less than that because of a displaced threshold. Right. Correct? Correct. Right? Okay. Yes. So now the question, the next question was what would be the runway a bearing capability and you said up to a 737. Uh, as a professional 737 driver in the corporate world and the airlines, there is no way in the, the blue moon I can bring a 737 into Oxnard with a displaced threshold. Um, even I, I'd have to be virtually uh, so far below max landing weight that I really am not carrying anything. So I could take off, barely take off in that length, even out of Van Eyes right now with the displaced threshold, the shortened runway, operating 737 out of there. It, it's serious business to get that machine in and out of there. So I, I, I think it's important that we not scare the public that we're gonna bring in essentially the mainstay of the airline industry. I'm not sure that that's really what's gonna happen. The corporate airplanes, uh, even a G5, um, well, in the, in the global seven, uh, 7500, uh, 7, which is the longest, biggest global build, grosses out, max gross weight, out of 118,000 pounds. And that's a big machine, but it's built for that because it has the landing capability because they just build the flaps into it to slow the approach speed down. Its approach speed is about 100. And 20 knots, 118 knots, not so on the 7.3. You can get the speeds faster than that. So I think it's very important. I support the project. Um, I'm not totally sure of which alternate to go with right now, but I think we, we need to make sure we don't scare the public when we start throwing around terms as the 737, which would also include the uh, Airbus uh, 319 or 318. And I'm not sure that that's a that's a good public relations issue. Okay, but thank you. Thank you for that information though. Yeah, thanks for that comment. We'll check into that further. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we are going to now go to um, Mark Sullivan. Um, Mark, we are going to unmute you and you may ask your question. Hold it. Did anybody look at the option? I don't know if there's enough room. Look at the option for the really light end of the, uh, the spectrum, the Cessna 150s, 172s, et cetera, of to the north of the runway having a temporary grass strip. That's question number one. And question number two, are rotor helicopters still going to be able to use the airport even during the full closure? As, as there, so let's start with the first part of the question on the grass strip. Um, really the one option that we looked at as far as an alternate landing site would be the taxiway Foxtrot, the, the north side strip to, we did look uh, as far as trying to meet that would not meet the FAA safety criteria to do that. So then to try to get that through the FAA is uh, highly unlikely we want to speak for them, but that's why uh, that option didn't really get much further consideration. As far as um, helicopter activity, um, 
so since the runway and taxiway would be closed to operation, but the apron would still be open, um, that, that could still be available for operations. And follow up on the safety considerations. Um, would, it does, would it meet the safety considerations if we were restricted, you know, to, to category one or even less than category one to, uh, you know, two place, four place light aircraft, which I think are the majority of the airplanes at the airport that are based there? Or is it still wouldn't meet the, the FAA's uh, TOFAs and the like? And, and that's what exactly it is. It's the TOFAs and the rope and their object free areas, uh, even for those size of aircraft, uh, even though they're small, it's still a, de a big enough area where you're going to have safety considerations. Understood. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, before we get to the next um, callers and questions, we are going to be closing the poll. Okay. Okay, um, we are going to get to the results in just one minute. We're gonna answer some more questions here. Um, okay, Andrew Borden, we are going to unmute you and you may ask your question. Hi, uh, I had to press my unmute button, apologies. I had some computer problems, so I just wanted to ask, will this uh, presentation be available for replay at a later time? I missed part of it. Uh, when my computer messed up. Um, yeah, yeah, great question. This, this, uh, this presentation is being recorded. So yes, it will be available for you to listen to. Okay, and, and one of the parts I, I might have missed is just uh, I might ask an hour later, but uh, is, is my understanding, did someone mention that all county uh, hangar tenants have to move, their, move out of the airport? Uh, the, Right now, again, we're not. It would not be required for the tenants to move out of the airport. Um, it just it, these are the impacts if the run. You know, the the project now we're talking about is if you know based on what alternate is what what section is closed. Oh, I see. So we just have, wouldn't wouldn't you you know be, be flying potentially for a little while, but we could just uh, be patient and uh, ride that out. Yes, correct. Oh, okay. Well, wonderful. Well, thank thank you, and uh, uh, look forward to. Uh, you know, thank you for doing this and for making the replay available later. That's the only questions I had. Thank you. Okay, we are going to get to another chat question from Andrew Klimish. Will the limited runway availability option provide for precision approaches, LPV or ILS? So dur during uh, any of the phases of the construction or any of the alternates that were considered, uh, it's, it would just be uh, for any of those that are open, alternates two and three, it's just day use VFR. So no uh, IFR operations or nighttime. Okay, we also had a question from Cass. Will there be a compass rose installed after the project is completed? Jeff, do you want to take this as far as you've got some background on that? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't believe, I mean, that's a great question. I don't believe we plan, or was a plan to put in a compass rose. Um, I'm not saying we can't, but it can be, it can be further looked into. I just know the, there are some pretty strict guidance on where and where they can be placed, but, uh, but good question. We can look into that and follow up. Okay, uh, we also had a question from Paul um, Duboucher. What are the geometric and drainage changes and why are they needed? I can respond to that question. So the, the, the drainage is, let me take a step back. So the FAA made some uh, compliance requirements updates about seven, eight years ago that gave, that changed the the transverse or from your pavement section change the slopes of the shoulders and some of the um, some of the areas outside. So if we do adjust the runway slightly up, we're going to incorporate as many of the drainage improvements and this is surface drainage improvements um, necessary to, to continue to drain and obviously meet safety compliance. Uh, a few of the other drainage improvements is taxiway Foxtrot does need to shift to the south slightly to meet the runway taxiway separation. And so we're going to be looking at some surface drainage improvements and potentially some, uh, we are in the preliminary phase, but we may have to do some, some modifications to the existing storm drain. 
as a way to further protect the future pavement, we're putting in, uh, it's called an under drain system. And what that is outside the edge of the pavement, it's a, it's a, a small pipe that's perforated that uh, has drain rock on top of it, similar to a French stripe drain, so that the water will go into that pipe and drain and connect to the existing storm drain system uh, to keep the water out of the, the pavement sections, which is one of the, the major items that cause deterioration to pavement. So, so those are, the drainage improvements are fairly limited at this point. And I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat the first part of that question? Or did I answer it? Uh, the question was, what are the geometric and drainage changes and why okay. are they needed? So as far as the geometric changes, the, uh, as Chuck had said, the runway length and width are going to, are planned to remain the same. The taxiway connectors are going to be, uh, there is going to be a reduction in the width of a few of the connectors just to meet current uh, FA standards. The FA, when reconstructing pavement, they wanted very closely modeled after their design guide for not only the initial construction cost, but also to minimize ongoing maintenance uh, costs for those pavement areas. So we'll be uh, following uh, the FA guidance and advisory circulars for those layouts of the connectors. And uh, Paul had a follow-up question to that. What caused the, de the deterioration of the base? Uh, so a lot of it is just time, you know, over yeah. time, uh, the, you know, we are close to the ocean. Uh, when we did the geotechnical investigation, we went down about 10 feet. And although we didn't find any uh, groundwater at that elevation, we did find calcium deposits and some leachate, which suggested that at time water was coming up um, into the uh, lower pavement and subgrade sections. So, um, so that is likely a, 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 an attributor, but just over time, you know, as aircraft operations continue to, um, to continue to hammer and pound on the pavement, it, it, there, is, there is a time where it does deteriorate past the point of, of being able to consider, it, uh, to consider it, you know, favorable for the next ongoing years. And, and using the FAA pavement design software, um, runway, taxiway, pavements, new reconstruction are designed for a 20 year life period. And this runway is at 28 years. So it's, it served its useful life well. And, and to go kind of on like what you're saying, Jeff, um, since this par project is being partially funded with FAA through an AIP grant, like Jeff mentions, with a grant, there are the grant assurances that the airport sponsor, in this case, the County of Ventura, has to abide to. And part of those are in the design of these types of projects. So there's very, uh, there's, very clear guidelines on pavement design, types of drainage, uh, airfield marking, signs, lights. So those are the types of guidance that uh, ha need, have to be followed as part of this project. Great. Uh, looks like we have some hands raised. Uh, Charles McLaughlin, we're going to unmute you now. Go ahead and unmute yourself as well. There we go. It, if you choose item one or alternate one, are you going to maintain the glass delta and the tower? Um, the, as far as, yeah, I don't know if, the, uh, as far as I know, the tower would be, would remain in operation because you would still have helicopter activity taking place at the airport. So then if the tower is then open then the glass delta would be in place. Well, we, the helicopters wouldn't need it. <laughs> My, my, my understanding is that the tower would remain open during the project and again the class delta then would still be in place. Okay. All right, thank you for your question. Uh, we have another hand raised from B. Bomar. We are going to unmute, your, unmute you and go ahead and unmute yourself. You can ask your question. Okay, looks like you're still muted. Now I think I unmuted. Oh, yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Uh, just a, a sort of a follow up a little while ago on the tenants here. So would there be a provision over at Camarillo Airport, say, for additional tie down space that uh, for those who would want to fly during the construction project? I, I think kind of like what Kip, Kip mentioned, if he has any more to add, I'll, you know, he can do that after I'm done. Um, you know, this project is looking at, you know, as far as what are the different options, but if aircraft did want to relocate out to another airport, they obviously have that option to do that. Um, but what facilities are available at Camarillo? Unless, Jeff, you have some more info on that. 
No, I think we did, once we kind of find out what alternative we're leaning towards, we can help coordinate uh, yeah. that with the tenants and where they're, they're possibly going to be relocated to, but that would certainly be involved with the Department of Airports. All right, so yeah, so that's just part of the uh, further process. Thank you. Yep, exactly. Great, thank you very much. Um, looks like there's some qu chat questions from James Schroeder. Um, in the awarded contract, will there be a financial penalty for the project delays or poor quality construction? Yeah, so I can answer that. So yeah, the FAA, um, as we were saying, it's very specific guidance that we follow. So there, there are specific penalties if um, for instance, if the aggregate base or the subgrade don't meet specification, they, they remedy that until they do meet specifications. If the asphalt, um, there are pay penalties for that if it's not up to FA standards, as well as if the contractor goes beyond the allotted time without any authorized extensions, for instance, for an unknown that might be found in the ground, there's also, it's called liquidated damages. Uh, and those are any, anywhere from a per hour or per day charge um, to cover the losses that the airport may suffer or for the additional efforts to maintain the staffing out there to complete the project. And those are evaluated based on the, the duration of the project, the risk and the affected parties. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mark Swanee had another question in the chat. Was taxiway availability considered within the runway reconstruction alternatives? I, mean, I guess, uh, Jeff, would you have an understanding of that question? Um, I, I'm, I don't know if he's meaning uh, is the taxiway availability during the runway. Um, it, it also is going to depend on what what gets totally funded with the project. Again, the base bid is to do the runway, and then we have the two uh, additive alternates or the bid alternates, uh, one being the connector taxiways and base bid two being the parallel taxiway. So there are tax there is taxiway work to take place if alternates one or two are funded during this project. Is he available? If that didn't answer his question, I was a little confused by the question. If Chuck didn't answer it. Yeah, the other option, if he, if he wants to put it uh, in an email and we'll show that at the end, you can submit that and we can respond to that if, if, you're, if you wanna do it that way. Um, it looks like he has his hand raised. So why don't we just unmute him and then maybe sure. we can get some clarification. Perfect. Um, okay, we're gonna unmute you. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay, good afternoon. The, uh, w the real intent there was the uh, drawings you showed of the runway construction didn't include, so basically is, is taxiway construction, if that's funded, is that gonna be happening at the same time the runway construction is? And if you've got partial runway uh, available, is that going to, is the cr construction going to be coordinated with the taxiway so that you could actually taxi to the available runway? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, oh, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I'll start off and Jeff finish up if you'd like. Um, yeah, so those, if, let's say we're doing alternate two and you've got um, uh, partial runway availability, there, there'll be taxiways available for the aircraft to uh, enter the runway and also then exit the runway. So there'll be a taxi route provided. So what has to be provided to the FAA is what's called a construction safety phasing plan for the given option of construction. So that also allows the, uh, the airport sponsor and then the FAA to weigh in on these different phasing. Uh, so if we choose to have that limit availability, that there is a way for the aircraft to get in and out the runway. Okay, uh, along with that, I, was, uh, I submitted a question, but I uh, made an error on that question. So take this opportunity to ask the, uh, we're told taxiway Delta would no longer be a high-speed uh, taxiway. Is there some reason that that would uh, change? Uh, not at this time. It's still shown on the on our drawings as well as the draft airport layout plan. In for FA review is a is taxiway delta as a high-speed exit. It it is slightly narrower to follow the current uh, the current pavement configuration and, and width requirements that I mentioned earlier. But it, it still is programmed to be a high-speed exit. Okay. Thank you. Yep, that, yeah, that remains in place. Uh, okay, looks like we have a question, a uh, hand raised from Mark Sullivan. Mark, we're gonna unmute you and you can ask your question. 
when it's rebuilt, I, I assume that Oxnard is built to Aircraft Design Group 3. Uh, that's an assumption. Is the design group uh, category, uh, uh, category of the airport going to change from the construction? As, as far as what's on the airport layout plan, um, no, that's, that's not a change to the airport from what's on the airport layout plan. What is it now? Is it design group three right now? I assume it is. I know it's going to be C3, correct, Chuck? Um, yeah, I didn't yeah. look what the existing configuration. Um, I can't recall off the top, but I, I believe it will be a C3. Yep. A C3. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, we had a question, another, another question from Brent Jacobs. What alternative is the county of airports leaning towards? When will we know so we can prepare where to put our airplane, uh, et cetera, for the construction period? Um, actually, at this time, I mean, we're open to, you know, the alternatives that we presented and, and it's really to vet through all the tenants to try to come up with the, the best scenario that accommodates, uh, you know, the most affected party. So at this time, we're not leaning uh, one way or the other, you know, the most cost effective is certainly to close everything and, and get in and get out in a timely manner. But we understand that that's not always feasible or, or wanted by the tenants. Um, and so, you know, the alternatives uh, two and three give other options that may extend the project a little longer, but also gives, you know, partial use of the airfield. So we're, we're wide open to ideas at this point and looking for feedback. And that was the main reason for the quiz, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, not the quiz, the, uh, the checkbox is to find out what people really want so we can continue to evaluate those options with the county and the FAA. Yeah, exactly right. Thank you, Jeff. You had to further go on. Yeah, that's that's really why we uh, the county wanted to do this workshop to get the input from uh, you as the airport tenants um, to take a look at the different options uh, that are uh, have been developed so we can get your feedback and input on that. And again, we'll mention a little bit later, you'll see it on the last, I think in the next slide when we're done with the question and answer, we're going to have uh, two more public workshops to again, uh, continue on with uh, feedback. And so you can see where the design is going. And one correction I did want to make, I apologize. Um, the, the current, it is for a future D3 category, not Charlie 3, Delta 3, um, is what is being validated through the FAA process right now for. So I, I do apologize. Okay, uh, looks like that was all the questions we had left in the chat. I do see a hand raised from Mark. Uh, we're going to go ahead and unmute you. Okay, this was just a follow up on the uh, somebody asked about doing approaches. Uh, I've flown into airports that were under construction and, and approaches were allowed in VFR conditions. Uh, so I think uh, the, the fact that you said no IFR operations, uh, I'm not sure that an approach in VFR conditions is considered IFR. So we'd like to at least to have that uh, alternative explored. Thank okay. you, Mark. We'll, we'll definitely coordinate with the FAA. Uh, we have, like I said, biweekly call. We'll, we'll determine what's acceptable and what they're able to accommodate. So thanks for that feedback. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. We'll, we'll uh, definitely raise that point to them. Okay, we had a couple of comments. We don't have any other questions at this point, but, um, oh, looks like Tom is raising his hand. Tom, we're gonna unmute you and you can go ahead. Can we see the, can we see the results of the survey? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We have those ready. Yes, yes, great question. So thank you for everybody for participating in the survey. Again, my name is Thomas Reese from the outreach team. So uh, again, our survey today, um, what is more important for you? Uh, option one was limited runway availability and option two was expedited construction duration. We had 42 total votes. Uh, limited runway availability received 52% of those votes and expedited construction duration received 48% of those results. So there are today's uh, polling results. All right, thank, thank you, Thomas. Very good information. Thank you for participating in those. Um, okay, uh, we just have a couple of comments left, um, and then 
I think that, that may be it, unless other people had questions. Um, from Andrew Borden, um, his comment was, a nice option for OXR tenants would be the uh, ability to reload for overnight parking at CMA if an IFR departure is uh, departure need is anticipated beforehand. And um, another comment from Andrew Klimish. Um, as the chief pilot of the largest aircraft based at OXR, uh, a 4,000 foot runway, especially one that's uh, day VFR, use only, use only does us a little good. We would strongly prefer the, clo the full closure to expedite things. And uh, at this time, that is all the questions we have. Oh, we have a hand raised, or we did. If you'd like to have, ask a question, go ahead and just press that one. Oh, there it is. Uh, Mike Alfred, we are going to unmute you. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Oh, very good. <clears throat> and I just make, I wasn't able, I got had some technology problems here and lost part of the, uh, the uh, discussion. But so I think someone said there was, was going to be five and a half months is that was that the time period for if you did it all at the same time expedited or the for alternate one which is the expedited one that's the uh three to four month time frame where the runway and the taxiways are closed um the, the five and a half month is the alternate two we're using the limited availability um the shorter runway length, the 2,500 feet on one side and 2,100 feet on the other side. So that's where the five and a half month time frame came in. Ah, okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, the the yeah. The, 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 sh the shorter duration is when you're doing the construction all at once and and getting it done and getting that uh, final product done all at one time. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So three to four months if they do it all same time, but if we break it out and split it, uh, then it's going to be like five and a half months. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mark has his hand raised. Mark, we're gonna unmute you now. For phase, if you do phase through the three phase, did I understand correctly that that would be five and, to five and a half months as well? Alex, do you wanna pipe in on the phasing for phase three? Yeah. As far as the limit? Our, our Rough estimate on the, I'm sorry, I put my mic is working better this time. Uh, a rough estimate on the alternative three would be around six to six and a half months for the three phase. Okay, looks like that is all the questions we have right now. Um, so you've got to turn it over to Jeanette right now at this point. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to read through some of the questions that we receive via email and then together as a team we'll answer them. So the first question is, uh, the runway improvements, are the runway improvements largely due to one, weight increases in the equipment operating in and out at Oxnard, current and predicted, two, drainage no longer meets FAA standards, or three, the lighting system to safely accommodate the LPV and WAS approaches needs improvement updating. So basically, is, oh, go ahead, Chuck. No, go ahead, Janet. So basically, yeah, how we explained through our presentation, yeah, this is largely to the payment, um, existing payment condition, as well as the new FA standards. That's why we're doing the project. And then second question, I've heard that the tab of all of this is going northward, northwards of 25 million. So right now the preliminary estimated construction costs are approximately between 25 to 35 million, but this is a rough number as we're in the preliminary stages of the design. And then question number three, um, does the high speed exit for runway 25 remain in place? There was another question about this already. As of now, the uh, high speed exit taxiway delta will remain in place. And question number four, 
Is there a chance that the LSAs and the tail draggers cooperate temporarily on and off the grass while construction is underway? Um, for this one, uh, from, construct, from the safety perspective, this is not advisable from the FAA, but we can look more into it. Question number five, who among the Oxnard Council member is on the airport's board? Um, so we're gonna be having another presentation. Uh, we're gonna be having pretty much like the, a summary of this presentation to the two boards on September 8th and September 10. If we go to the next slide, we have that information there. So these are all the questions that, that we got via email. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them now, or you can also uh, reach, uh, send an email to the project email that you can see on this slide, or you can also call the helpline help and then leave a message there with your question and we'll get back to you. Okay, at this point, we don't have any other hands raised or questions in the chat. So, um, Stacy, if you can take us out. Great, <clears throat> great, thank you, everybody. Um, so, as Jeanette just stated here, um, this is our contact slide. So, please make sure to take down all this information. We want to thank you all for attending and participating today. Uh, please be on the lookout for next steps. And uh, again, make sure you take down the project website, our email and our hotline number. Um, we plan to host, um, as you can see here, a second meeting in October and one in January. So more info will be sent your way on those two meetings. Um, again, please also reach out with any follow-up questions and a project team member will respond. So with that, we will be uh, concluding this presentation. And again, thank you everybody for your participation. Perfect. Bye everybody. <laughs> thank you, have a good rest thank of the Thank you. Day. Thanks. Bye everybody.